A Uthron, a Guinea Ushla Agus Achorda Galer, to Faulty Rove Galer, who can occult special to Shah Ishkel on Oskel, on Cade Lakes, owner Uthron Nua, Professor Orla Feely. Agus is more an owner of Gumsa, a Veliv, and Shah Anu Homai. It's my privilege to be involved in this event, the inaugural lecture of ECD President Professor Orla Feely. As a representative of faculty and staff, I'm delighted to introduce you to a celebration of the community here in UCD. As a first element of this celebration of both students and staff of the university, I'm delighted to welcome the UCD Choral Scholars, conducted by my colleague, Associate Professor Desmond Early of the UCD School of Music. They will begin our proceedings today with Rivers of Light. Please welcome the Choral Scholars.
Not great is in Dreeftwer. That was just magical. Thank you sincerely to our choral scholars and to Des for that wonderful, wonderful performance. So beautiful. The gifted singers who make up the Choral Scholars, they come from a wide range of academic disciplines and each of the students apply for the competitive audition process to become a Choral Scholar um, and they work very hard at their craft and art as I'm sure you appreciate there. In recent years they have performed the Irish Chamber Orchestra, the RTE Concert Orchestra, the European Chamber Orchestra, and in touring the Netherlands, Hungary, Italy, Belgium, Luxembourg, the UK and the United States, they have brought UCD and its music to an international audience and we're delighted to have them with us to have opened our proceedings today. As I mentioned at the start, today is a celebration as we welcome our new president, Professor Orla Feely, in commencing her term. It's a real pleasure for me to be involved in this event because I joined UCD um, as an undergraduate student of theoretical physics all the way back in 2001, I think I saw one of my classmates down there actually, I rejoined the university in 2014 as a faculty member of the School of Mathematics and Statistics in the College of Science in Science North, which is no longer sadly with us now, but we'll look forward to its next phase. And the science building looks very different now to what it was in the early 2000s when I joined UCD and when we were able to buy a chicken burger for a pound as our staple lunch in the science canteen. Part of my academic work here in UCD has focused on education and public engagement and President Feely has very much supported and highlighted the hugely important role that the university research, teaching and activities contribute to Irish society and that we in UCD share with the public across Ireland and internationally through the policy work, the research and the community initiatives that are continuously underway at UCD. As a former post-primary teacher, most, much of my work focuses on improving the learning experiences of students and with that I'm delighted today that we celebrate students and student life here in UCD. As part of that, we'll now hear from students and recent graduates to get a flavour of what it means to be part of our university here in UCD. And with that, it's my pleasure to firstly introduce Israel Olatunde. Many of you will know Israel from his sporting moniker as the fastest, uh, as Ireland's fastest man. And Israel, who's from Dundalk, is a professional track and field athlete. He's a former UCD Ad Astra Academy track, uh, Academy track star, and he made history in August 2022 when he became the first Irish runner to compete in a European 100 metre final. He crossed the finish line in 10.17 seconds, breaking the previous Irish national record, which had stood for 15 years to become Ireland's fastest man. Israel will tell you a little bit about his story now and his studies in UCD, but in May this year, he was named UCD Sportsman of the Year at the UCD Sports Awards. And just a few weeks ago, here in O'Reilly Hall, he was awarded his Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science. So please join me in welcoming Israel Olatunde to the podium. Good afternoon, evening, UCD President Professor Orla Feely, honored guests, faculty, and students. It is a privilege to be here on this historic occasion. I don't want to take up too much of your time. As the fastest Irishman in history, I like to live up to my title. <laughs> well, like many, my time in UCD was a transformative period. Four years ago, I was at the beginning of my academic journey at UCD, but also at the beginning of my journey, as an, of my athletic journey as a 100 meter sprinter. I was 17 years old, anxious as to whether I had what it takes to be an elite sports scholar here at UCD. I remember, I remember being concerned about my schedule as a student athlete. I know the academics in the room will be pleased to hear the student come before the athlete but it, didn't always, it wasn't always like this for me. I was 100% in both endeavors. I remember days getting home from training at 10 p.m. at night 
I was waking up the next day at 5 a.m. to start my two-hour daily commute to UCD. I'd get to campus at half seven in the morning and catch up on missed lectures. It doesn't really sound like too much fun, but it was worth it for me. I was living my dream. I had loads of support from my friends and family. I remember my dad, some days he'd finish work and wait three hours for me, to, and then he'd pick me up from training and take me back to Dundalk. Others in my family offered the same type of selfless support. There was no magic ball to tell them that their sacrifices would amount to anything. All they asked for me was that I love what I do and I give it my all. Four years on and I'm still embarking on new journeys. I'm beginning my life post UCD. I'm also beginning my life as a full-time professional athlete. The highlight of my career so far was setting the 100 meter national record at the 2022 European Championships in Munich with a time of 10.17 seconds. It marked a new age for me and, for, and also for Irish sprinting as a whole. I remember leaving the stadium and my coach Daniel Hagalan pulled me aside and he had told me, Israel, be prepared for your life to change. But in fact, I was not ready at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> After the European Championships, I had to come back down to earth. Months later, the Championships was just a memory, but the expectation, pressure, and attention still lingered. I found myself in an uphill battle, trying to prove myself day in, day out at training and competition, trying to prove to myself and to others, I was who I said I was. I remember sitting down with my former coach, Jerry McCardo, who was also my mentor. I was telling him about these struggles. His response was simple, but it changed my perspective on myself and my career. He told me that these battles weren't real. He reminded me that I was an artist by nature, not a soldier. I, in that moment, I remembered why I started my athletic journey. This sport is a platform for me to express the art and love within me with those around me. In 2023, I went into the National Indoor Championships with this in mind. I was liberated, weightless, and free. There was a latent energy within me waiting to be released, and it manifested on the track as I set the national 60 meter record at the time of 6.5 seconds, seven seconds, making me the undisputed fastest Irish man in history. Throughout this talk, I've described life as a journey, but in reality, it's more of a voyage, a trip into the unknown. There's constant highs and lows, beginnings and endings, but it should never be a fight, just a cycle of losing and finding ourselves. As Professor Feely embarks on her tenure as president of UCD, I'll use a bit of French to wish her luck. Bon voyage. Thank you. Thank you sincerely, Israel. Um, your success absolutely demonstrates your commitment to your goals, and we wish you continued outstanding success in your creative professional career in the next Olympics, and also when you return to computer science. Thank you very much, Israel. I'm delighted to now introduce you to another very recent graduate, Kerry Rowan. Kerry came to UCD to study medicine as a mature entry student, aged 30, and she doesn't mind me telling you that. She arrived to UCD with a 1916 bursary and graduated from the UCD School of Medicine last June. She was voted Medicine Student of the Year for 2023 by her classmates, and her dream of becoming a doctor was fulfilled this year when she started on her rounds as a medical intern in St. James's Hospital, Dublin. So please give a very warm welcome to Dr. Kerry Rowan. Thank you. So it's an absolute honor to be here today to celebrate the inaugural lecture of Professor Feely as president of UCD. 
Um, as part of preparing for today, I was trying to think of maybe what I should say, and somebody put the question to me, why would anybody go to university at 30 after 12 years after finishing education? What would drive someone to go back? And so it kind of got me thinking. And I realized that I had returned because I wanted to follow my dream. Um, when I was a young child growing up in Finglas, I dreamed of being a doctor. I also wanted to be a pilot, but a crippling fear of heights knocked that one on the head. <laughs> um, but the dream kind of faded over time in the way that dreams can, you know, as we get into adulthood. Um, neither of my parents had finished school, so you got out and worked, and we were given the same choice. You pick something to do, go to college and study it, or start working. Um, and it was a generational thing. Education just didn't feature heavily in our lives. So my dad set up a successful skateboard shop in the city centre, and he still skates today at age 66. So it worked well for them, which is brilliant. So another question I'm often asked as well is, where did the idea come from, you know, to, to go back? And without trying to sound flippant, the, the idea came from nowhere. I genuinely, at the age of 28, I woke up one morning, and I, I didn't just have a thought, I had a feeling that actually I'm supposed to be a doctor, this is what I'm supposed to do with my life. And I don't know where it came from, but it was there and it wouldn't go away. Um, at this point in my life, I was a solo parent on social welfare, living in the north inner city. So it was a ridiculous thought, uh, so I laughed it off, uh, but I just couldn't let it go. I kept thinking about it and I had no friends or family members who were doctors, so I had nobody to ask about it, but it kept turning over in my mind. So I ended up turning into the most famous doctor of all for help, and that was Dr. Google. Um, so the internet became my guide. I found forums online, boards.ie, um, and so many questions that I had about getting into medicine as a mature student were already asked by other people and answered by people. Um, so that really paved the way to me figuring out my own path in. Um, so there are three medical schools in Dublin. Um, I cast a, uh, a wide net, spaces are like gold dust, so I wanted to apply to everybody. Um, two rejected me, um, but I got a letter then from UCD inviting me for interview. So I didn't hold out much hope, <laughs> but I didn't want to give up either. Um, so I went in with my head held high. I sat across from a panel of three people who were interviewing me. I told them that I wanted to be a doctor, and why I wanted to be a doctor and that if I didn't get it, I'd find out where I went wrong and come back next year. So I don't know if it was the threat of that, but <laughs> thankfully they believed me. <laughs> and they decided that UCD was willing to put up with me for six years. Um, and I believe one or two of those people might be in the audience today, so thank you. Um, so I was in, and college was incredible. I was thrust into this vibrant world of academia and was having lectures from people with the kinds of brains I hadn't encountered before. Um, I was surrounded by kids who'd just gotten two million points on their leave insert. <laughs> and to, to say it was intimidating does not cut it. <laughs> but, um, but everyone was so friendly and helpful. And cliche as it sounds, we all became like a giant family looking out for each other. And I became the inadvertent class mum to 260 very tall children. <laughs> but it was a role that I loved. And um, we'd share notes in group chats, we'd have group study sessions, and we'd pull each other through tough times. So college wasn't without its hurdles. Childcare was a big issue. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm my daughter's only parent, so the book stops at me when it comes to her care. Um, one day in fourth year, a week before my exams that year, her after school phoned me to say that from five o'clock that day they were closing permanently. And uh, whew, I found my parents in tears. <laughs> and I just didn't know what to do. If, if she couldn't be collected from school, I'd have to, and I wouldn't be able to finish my degree. So they told me to calm down. Um, my dad said that he was going to close his shop every day in the afternoon, collect my daughter from school, and mind her until I finished college that day. And to quote him directly, he said, if I have to do it every day until you're a bloody doctor, I will. <laughs> and he did for two whole years. Um, and that led me to the 1st of June of this year. In this very building, I graduated as a doctor. Um, later that evening, I received an award for Medicine Student of the Year, as voted for by my peers. 
And I know people say the day you look into your child's eyes for the first time is the happiest day of your life. But this came really close to knocking that off the top spot. <laughs> so now I'm working as an intern doctor in an area of deprivation in the south inner city. And I feel that because of my background, I can use it as a strength. And it allows me to relate to my patients in a lot of ways and hopefully provide good, compassionate, non-judgmental care to them. So this brings me to my main point, which is that success. Usually we, we see the results, we don't see the journey. We don't see the, the hurdles and the times that people fall down. But success rarely, if ever, occurs in a vacuum. No person is an island. And the reason I'm here today isn't because of me. They say it takes a village to raise a child, but it took a whole town to get me through college. Um, yes, I studied and sat the exams, but my family gave me the childcare and emotional support and were my biggest cheerleaders. My classmates helped me when I struggled. And the staff at UCD were such a big part of making it happen, not only by letting me in, but supporting me through my studies in very tangible ways. They gave me a scholarship, they adjusted rotations so that I wasn't too far from home and I could stay looking after my daughter while also fulfilling my clinical duties. They were that rock in the background and I got the sense that they wanted me to succeed as much as I wanted it. So because of everyone around me, now I can be the kind of role model that I want to be for my daughter, who's 12 now. I head off to work each morning proud that I can provide for her while doing something that I love. And she's already talking about going to university when she grows up, and that makes me so happy to hear it. So this university has changed my life. And as a new chapter in leadership begins in UCD, with a woman at the helm for the first time, I couldn't be prouder to be a UCD alumna. And to Professor President Feely, I would like to say that you're a role model to women everywhere. I hope you have an extraordinary village around you, and I wish you every success in your term as president. Thank you. Thank you sincerely, Dr. Rowan, and how lucky for all of us that you're now part of the medical profession. We wish you all the very best with the rest of your training and thank you so much for taking the time to be with us here today. Chomela Shaw is Fela Agashkeli Eschafon, a Scriven Gafrivo, Trivan Nogelga. The Unchanga Bio Agas Lodger and Campus Shop, Eklosh the Ulska Balia Clea, Agas Estoi Mudanish, Lago Peace Affiliate Atosh Grifa, Ex Stefan, Three Gelga. So please give, join me in giving Stefan a very warm welcome to the podium. <laughs> and thank you all for inviting me here to, uh, to speak. It's, it's an honour, really, and a privilege to be a part of this occasion today for President Feely. Um, I'm going to read two short poems in Irish, and I'll give an English explanation before each poem. So I've spent the best part of 10 years now in UCD as a student and as staff, and then back to being a student. Um, it's nearly my whole adult life. And I wouldn't be who I am today without UCD, without the people here that have taught me and have been part of my journey. And studying here, and especially learning Irish here, I wasn't fluent in Irish when I came here, but I was fluent within a couple of months being forced into, uh, into Irish here. Um, it opened up a whole new world for me, and it taught me so much. And it wasn't until I came to UCD that I realized that Irish is a living language in the fullest sense of the word. word. Um, that was the most important lesson that I was taught here, I think. This first poem that I'm going to read, it's called Corbus, which means inheritance. And it's about learning. It's about receiving and carrying on a tradition from those uh, who've came before. And it centers on this image of a man whistling as he leads a horse and cart. And as the man passes the narrator, the whistling stops. So the narrator takes up the tune. Corbus. Er vohirin an yirig, doch muck i chach, ach, is chuckalin. Agus far in hrori, fadil, fuin e jemig den gush. 
Tu chwena mir cyn, siaw gawol harm, is dy frawn siaw urm, portus. Tu chwena dor lo, ach, is trocolin, tef hir dyn. Hitch, tost, er yn var, agos hos nis, eg fadi. Gwyrimio Margaret. Uh, as I said, I am who I am because of UCD, and it's actually quite hard for me to even remember or recognize the person, the nervous boy I was when I first hopped on a 39A and made my way out to campus here. Um, so this final poem, it's titled Ginunt, which means conception. It's about sort of changing, evolving, becoming something new. The central image is of a severed finger, gruesome enough. I'm not sure why I picked that image, but that's what it is. Um, and the, the finger is slowly withering. But as this happens, it begins to realize that it's no longer a finger, but something new entirely. So, Ginud. Is mer me, mer loive, and kyaun shup. Aktom gyarhe, gyarhe la fadigas fos fwilig shililum in mrenta byagajarga. Kailum avilonum George near George Titcher Marshkeel Tev Hirdin Gi Pointer Ksme Full of Gam Da Gam Love Mim Navani Omalon Ach and Shin Pugum Fenyara Nach Mare Me a Hille Ach Nyach Egan Nua Grimil Margaret. And thank you also to Kerry and to Israel. It's so wonderful to hear some of the inspiration and talent that we have within our student and graduate community and a real positive reminder of what can be achieved when we support our young people through the whole of their educational journey. So thank you sincerely again to Israel, to Kerry and to Stefan. Thank you. For this next part of our proceedings, I'd now like to invite Chair of the Governing Authority, Marie O'Connor, and President Professor Orla Feely to the stage. Uh As they're taking their seats, I'll begin my introduction to Marie O'Connor as she's joining us on the stage. Marie is chair of the sixth ECD governing authority, which has served UCD since January 2019. In addition to this role, Marie is also the chair and non-executive director of a number of financial services and other organizations. She was appointed partner at PricewaterhouseCoopers over 30 years ago, becoming the first female partner at the company. In this role, she worked extensively with US companies in establishing and expanding operations in Europe and in Ireland. During her stellar career at PwC that spanned four decades, she was appointed to several non-executive directorships by the Irish government, including Dublin Airport Authority and IDA Ireland. In 2018, she was appointed chair of the Gender Equality Task Force, aimed at accelerating progress to achieve gender balance in Irish higher education institutions. And I think we've come quite a way since 2018 in that. She co-founded and was appointed as the first chair of Ireland's 30% Club, part of a global campaign by board chairs and CEOs committed to improving gender balance at leadership levels throughout their organisations. She's received many awards, including a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Ireland US Council for building business relationships between US and Ireland, and she was also honoured by UCD's College of Business in 2016. She's a fellow of the Chartered Association of Certified Accountants and is also qualified as a barrister at law in preparation for which she studied at UCD and two of her four children, and I've no idea how she did all of that and had four children, are also graduates of UCD. So please join me in giving a very, very warm welcome to Marie O'Connor. Thank you very much, Aveen. Cade Mila Falter, to all our guests, 
to our faculty, staff, alumni, governing authority members, and most importantly, to Professor Orla Lee and her wonderful family. What an exciting day to be at UCD, as we heard from such outstandingly talented students and staff of the UCD community. Thank you. I'm looking forward to the rest of the afternoon, and in particular, to our new president, Professor Orla Feely's inaugural lecture. Five years ago, when the sixth governing authority was appointed, we could have never envisaged the challenges that lay ahead for UCD. But we look back now with great pride in how UCD continued to flourish and to make a unique and distinctive contribution to modern Ireland across every sphere of activity and every level of society and to reinforce its position as Ireland's largest and global university and a leading research intensive university in Europe. COVID brought constant challenge to every aspect of life at UCD and as I've said often before, I can't thank all our staff enough for their dedication in supporting our students and each other through those years and indeed supporting Ireland more widely. UCD has always been the backbone of Team Ireland, developing first-class talent and world-class research to support Ireland's economy and its national priorities. The power of higher education to deliver change for the better is needed now more than ever as we address the major global challenges. Competition for international business opportunities is intense and it is essential that we have a first-class environment here in Ireland from all aspects. UCD can continue to make a positive difference in so many ways through its diverse community. But further investment in education is essential. And as you know, Ireland has acknowledged that it is underinvested in the core funding of the higher education sector. While UCD has been successful in diversifying its sources of fee income, which enabled us to invest in our people and improve our infrastructure. Sadly, we also had to defer many other important plans because of report, uh, resource constraints. Yet more and much more investment is needed in supporting our faculty, our staff and students in our campus facilities and student accommodation to improve UCD's place in the global rankings and to ensure that we have the best possible environment for our staff and students to thrive in the future, enabling Ireland to maximise its talent pipeline, address its major national priorities and compete globally. The sixth governing authority is gender balanced, as is the university management team. And I'm delighted, as Aideen has said, that UCD has made significant progress during our term on the Athena Swan Awards and in promoting women to senior academic roles. There's also greater diversity and inclusion among our faculty, staff and the student population. But there's still more to be done to remove barriers to equality and to ensure that every member of the university is enabled to achieve their full potential. Today's podium reflects that same change in Ireland and in the diversity of the UCD community but I also want to recognise that looking at the picture in front of you today is very significant. For the last 169 years of UCD's history, there would have been three wonderful men on the stage at the equivalent event. And now I hope you'll all agree there's three wonderful women on the stage. <laughs> So a significant moment, you might say, which is emblematic of how UCD is always at the vanguard of change, and a moment that evidences the outstanding academic research and leadership quality at UCD is the appointment of one of our own, Professor Orla Feely, as the new president of UCD. Orla is an alum of University College Dublin, having completed her degree in electronic engineering at UCD where she excelled academically and won first prize. Orla left Ireland to study at the University of California, Berkeley in the booming Silicon Valley of the 1980s. 
funded in part by a fellowship from Intel. Orla completed her master's and then her PhD in nonlinear circuits, winning the top prize in her department in Berkeley for her outstanding and innovative research. And then Orla, with all her energy, passion, intellect and drive, chose to return to Ireland to make her contribution to the economic progress and social change that was taking place in our country at that time. Progress and change, that she says, was palpable to her, even from as far away as the west coast of the United States used to be in those days. Progress and change that was stimulated and charged by the transformative power of university education and third level research. Orla took up a lecturing position in the UCD Faculty of Engineering, and she very quickly built up a highly successful research team and was awarded research grants and prizes from multiple national, international, and industry sources. She combined her career with many leadership roles in national and European organizations, as chair of the Irish Research Council, chair of the EU Advisory Group on Marie Curie Actions, President of Engineers Ireland, a member of the Board of the Higher Education Authority, and as Vice President for Resources and Treasurer of CESAR. As a Director of the Young Scientist and, Techno Young Scientist and Technology Exhibition, Orla took every opportunity to support and encourage many bright young minds to follow their dreams and their ambitions, especially young women with an interest in the STEM. She's a member of the Royal Irish Academy, a fellow of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, Engineers Ireland, and the Irish Academy of Engineering. Orla and her husband, Philip, also reared their wonderful twin boys, Matthew and Stephen, who are both now at university. Professor Feely was appointed Vice President of Research and Innovation and Impact at UCD in 2014. And in this role, Orla also delivered outstanding results and world-class leadership, taking the university to the very top of the table for the EU Horizon Europe Research Funding Awards in Ireland. Under her leadership, publications, citation impact and innovation success for UCD have all substantially increased, with major initiatives developed in sustainability, agri-food, ag-tech, quantum technologies, personalised medicine, social science, the humanities, and lots of others. In February of this year, the Governing Authority appointed Professor Feely as the next president of University College Dublin, succeeding Professor Andrew Deeks and acting president, Professor Mark Rogers. It was my privilege to lead the recruitment and appointment process for the new president, and I can assure you that Orla was the outstanding candidate in every way. Her connection and bond to UCD shone through at every stage. Her values perfectly align with the core values of the university, and her future vision for UCD is unmatched. Since Orla took up the role of UCD president in May, she's met with and listened carefully to faculty, staff, students, external stakeholders, national and international partners of UCD, to hear what they have to say about the university and to understand how she, as its president, can grow and deepen the bonds between UCD and these communities to build the reputation of this great university at home and abroad. Her appointment has been so well received. Everybody I meet tells me that. I can see that her reputation is already enhanced with Orla at the helm as the new president. And I look forward to seeing her realize the great ambitions she has for UCD with the support of the new seventh governing authority to be appointed next month. The current governing authority and I have witnessed the enormous progress that UCD has made despite so many challenges. In particular, we have witnessed how UCD's community of scholars, staff, and students always joins together in difficult times. I've also witnessed you demonstrate the true values of UCD, fostering excellence and creativity, 
championing integrity and diversity, and encouraging collegiality and engagement. Thank you again for all you do for our great university. And I've also witnessed how the UCD community celebrates together in times of triumph and joy. And this is one of those times, a time of triumph and joy when we celebrate together as a community. Professor Orla Beely is an exceptional person. She has a deep sense of public service, a wonderful trait of her family. Orla has the drive, belief, and leadership qualities to champion and lead UCD to greater and greater success as a public university, as a university that deeply values its diverse set of communities and stakeholders. I have full faith that under Professor Orla Beely's presidency, University College Dublin will continue to fill its ambitious role in Ireland and around the world, and that it will play an increasingly central role in tackling the many societal and global challenges that we face today in new and innovative ways. What an exciting time for all at UCD. Orla, we wish you the very best. And can you all welcome a wonderful lady, our president, Professor Orla Field. Distinguished guests, colleagues, friends and family, both those of us on campus here and those joining online. Is more us on honor agus an pleasure ei dumsa a bheann sionlibh in iúm chun mar leacht tionscaip a hort mar uachtarán ar chalais na halscaile bailleoghlaí. Thank you, Marie, for those very kind words and for the great commitment to UCD and to our values and our community that you have shown as chair of the sixth governing authority. Thank you also to Evine, to Israel, Kerry and Stefan, and to those enriching this event through your music. It was very important to me that this event should not just be a traditional big lecture, I've given enough of those, but that it should be a showcase and a celebration of our university and of our community at this time of transition. I do also want to take this opportunity to describe some of the factors that have shaped me and to talk about how this is reflected in my understanding of UCD and my vision for the university. The first and greatest of my many good fortunes was to be born into a loving and supportive family, very happily expanded over the years. Most of my family are here today, and I'm thinking in particular today of those who cannot be. I was also very fortunate to grow up not just in a family, but also in a community and a country that valued education. I started school at St. Pius X National School in Temple Oak around the start of the 1970s. Shortly after the school opened, and just as it moved from, moved from prefabs to a new modern school building. I moved on to secondary school then at Our Lady's Terenure. Less than a decade after the introduction of free upper second level education in Ireland, and just as that school opened an entirely new modern building. Later, just as I advanced to senior cycle, the school opened a major new laboratory extension, of which I was an enthusiastic first beneficiary. I grew up so, thinking that every school smelled of fresh paint and new carpets and their libraries of new books. Every child should be so fortunate. I did not realize at the time how my understanding of my place in the world and the opportunities open to me were being changed by those decisions of others to invest in my education. But I'm very much aware of it now. I'm also strongly aware of the outstanding quality of the education that I received within those new buildings. Among many inspirational teachers, one whom I would single out because of her very specific influence on my next steps is Deirdre Kelly, a brilliant expert teacher of higher level maths, 
at a time when this was not offered by many girls' schools. I'm absolutely delighted to have Deirdre with us today, along with the principals and other representatives, including students of the schools to which I owe so much. As I moved up through secondary school, I took for granted that I would go on to university. Looking back, I'm aware of what a privilege that was. It was a privilege denied to my parents and theirs and theirs before them. Small farmers in Leitrim and shopkeepers in Abbey Leaks. My father in particular would have loved the opportunity to attend university, but his circumstances did not permit it. He later often spoke with pride of his four children attending the university, as he would refer to it. For him, there was only one. <laughs> and when choosing what to study at university, I was again the beneficiary of fortunate circumstances. The 1970s and early 1980s brought advances in technology that seemed to open up new worlds. One year I received from Santa an early pocket calculator with red LED display and temperamental buttons. And I can still remember giving it hard sums and trying to defeat it. <laughs> we listened to electronic music on the new Sony Walkman and heard tell of computers for the home. Technology seems to offer an exciting future for a student like me with my love of maths and crucially, for a girl like me. It was only through the 1970s that the number of women studying engineering in Ireland went from a very tiny trickle to a steady, if still small, flow. The late Christina Murphy wrote often in the Irish Times about the opportunities for women in the profession. And the late John Kenny, then Dean of Engineering at UCD, held open days for schoolgirls in the main lecture theatre in UCD Merrion Street now the site of the grand staircase in government buildings. Once again, I was a beneficiary of the work of others, this time of the pioneering women who took those difficult early steps and those who worked to grow their number. And so in 1982, at the age of 16, I started in UCD engineering and had four very happy years across Belfield, Earlsford Terrace, and most of all, Merrion Street. I received a great education from faculty who, despite the much more restricted circumstances in Ireland at the time, saw no reason to impose restrictions on the education and the ambition they passed on to their students. I graduated in 1986 in a class of brilliant, ambitious electronic engineers with an absolutely world-class education from UCD. The world was our oyster, but with one problem. There were no jobs for us in Ireland. That's not entirely true. Companies like the ESB always offered great jobs, as did early multinationals in the country, like Analog Devices and Digital Equipment Corporation. But overall, the country offered nowhere near the scale and quality of the opportunity for which we had been educated. And so we left en masse headed for the likes of Philips in Eindhoven or Siemens in Munich, or in my case, to Berkeley in California, where I went to study for a PhD. Again, let me acknowledge my great good fortune, this time to get to study and conduct research at one of the world's great research universities, at a time when students from a country like Ireland were welcomed and funded in significant numbers. This brought me into a new world, if I trace my academic genealogy through my PhD supervisor, Leon Chua, his supervisor and his supervisor and so on, there are names like Vannevar Bush, driving force behind the creation of the US National Science Foundation, Fred Terman, provost of Stanford and father of Silicon Valley, and back to Thomas Edison. My ambitious engineering education at UCD had provided the bridge from this new, to this new family tree from my original family tree the farmers of Leitrim and the shopkeepers of Abbey Leaks. I am the beneficiary of the work and the traditions of all of these. An interesting thing happened during my time in Berkeley. Being Irish went from being the subject of pleasant conversational curiosity 
to the subject of intense professional curiosity. Senior figures whom I encountered in Silicon Valley and its universities were getting wind of the fact that something was happening in Ireland and they wanted to know more. Ireland was transforming economically, industrially and socially in a story that has had very few parallels around the world. There were a number of drivers behind this, but the one that has truly delivered the ongoing substance of this transformation is talent. As captured in the iconic mid-1980s IDA Young Europeans campaign, with its memorable image of a group of smiling engineering and science graduates. And not just any graduates, graduates of UCD, the university in the worldview of my father and others like him. The booklet I received at John Kelly's open day said that around 70% of the engineering graduates in Ireland at that time were from UCD. 70%. Think of the significance of that number and what it has delivered for Ireland. And that's just the engineers. Think of the other disciplines across this university and their contribution to the Irish transformation. Think of the impact of UCD's professionalization of business education in Ireland. Think of the impact of those in and from UCD who worked for social reform or in championing Irish culture. Take any discipline your own favourite discipline in this university, and think of the impact of the UCD faculty and graduates within that discipline. I am somebody who values stories, and this is one of the key stories that has shaped me and that drives me. I saw how this country went from being an economic backwater to a country that, even with all of the problems that we recognise today, has accrued success, capability, reputation and wealth that would have been unfathomable to me back in Merrion Street. And I know, because I am one of those who lived this story, how this relied on education, back to that fresh paint and new carpets, and on higher education, which delivered the talent and the advanced skill sets on which we have disproportionately relied. And I know how much of the story was delivered by UCD, a university that in its scale and its substance has made an unparalleled difference to the transformation of Ireland as I have experienced it. UCD is and always has been a university that makes a difference to the lives of our students, to Dublin, to Ireland and very importantly now to the wider world. We make things happen, we leave our mark to take one example of this, visit the Museum of Literature Ireland, Molly, a partnership between UCD and the National Library of Ireland, and see how our university's first home on St. Stephen's Green has been transformed. Take a look not only at the exhibits and exhibitions, but also at the school groups, the families and the lifelong learners engaging with the activities there and witness Molly's award-winning work in fostering social cohesion, inclusion, and multicultural dialogue. Visit Lyons Farm, our teaching and research farm, or Farm Zero C in County Cork, or our partnership with the dairy industry in Rwanda, and see how UCD researchers are coming up with practical solutions to the challenges of sustainable agriculture. Consider the work of Evin very recently, in chairing the world's first Citizens' Assembly on biodiversity loss. And of course, the Citizens' Assembly model itself, now implemented in a number of countries around the world, was developed by UCD Professor David Farrell to see whether a more deliberative form of democracy could work at a time when people felt adrift and disconnected from power. And consider also the outstanding achievements of the UCD alumni community of over 300,000 located all over the world, including France, where Ireland's Rugby World Cup squad has 13 members from UCD. And we wish them all the very best. For me, one of the stories that best pulls together the many aspects of what we do is that of AirSat, Ireland's first satellite, 
which has been designed and built here in UCD and will be launched over the coming months. This is at its core a student project, which has given the students involved an extraordinary experience and skill set. The research is a, a, about as fundamental as you can get, exploring gamma ray bursts that tell us about events in the early universe, and is of course very highly applied in meeting the very stringent requirements for spaceflight. The team has worked across disciplines in very innovative ways. Etched on the side of the satellite is a poem written for AirSat by a group of school students working with UCD creative writing academics. The AirSat team has delivered advanced teaching to UCD students and engaged with many external audiences, particularly school children, using the excitement of space to excite them about science and engineering in a variant of my open days of old. They have collaborated with the key leaders internationally and nationally, growing reputation for Ireland. And we in UCD are now working with government and its agencies, along with others, to build out from this one project to support the development of an industry sector for Ireland in space and earth observation, an area of opportunity that plays to Ireland's strengths. So over the course of our work, what started off as a student-focused project has extended its ambition to the development of a globally networked industry sector. This is the reach that a university like UCD can have. What I see in UCD today, what I have seen of UCD in its impact on my own life and the life of Ireland, and what I want to see into the future, is a university that can and does land real positive change in the world. At a time when many, and in particular those of our students' generation, feel powerless at the scale of the challenges facing the world, in UCD we have the ambition, the scale, the substance, and many distinctive advantages that enable us to make a difference in areas that matter. I want us to lift our ambition around the scale of what we can contribute to the big global concerns, to engage at a new level with Ireland and with the wider world, to understand and advance our strategic positioning, and to get our story and our stories out there with conviction and purpose. This morning, to mark the day of my inaugural lecture, I planted an Irish native oak tree just outside O'Reilly Hall here in the presence of colleagues who work in the area of sustainability and biodiversity and in managing our estates. The oak is one of the longest living trees in Ireland. It can live for up to a few centuries. It also supports more life than any other native tree species. We've over 50,000 trees in UCD, and this is just one, but it marks what we consider and what I consider to be important at this time of transition for our university. We don't know how the world will evolve over the term of my presidency, but one thing we can be certain of is that the world's response to unfolding climate and biodiversity crises will be absolutely central to this period. We in UCD can help here, and we must. Another area of clear and enormous disruption is in digital technologies an area that poses major questions about how we prepare our students for the future of work and of life. In digital technologies, as in sustainability, we in UCD have been strategically building capacity and we have people, programs and plans of real significance. In these areas, as in others, expertise in ethics, human behaviour and governance must be combined with the sciences and engineering. And we are finding that the strength and reach of our disciplines in UCD and the connections across them present real advantages for us. When planting the tree, I used, with great care, the shovel that Eamon de Valera used when turning the sod in September 1962 for the development of the Belfield campus. Those attending that ceremony would be astounded by the campus today, as indeed are much more recent graduates when they come back to visit us. This campus is an extraordinary 
and a hard-earned asset for UCD and for our students. We will develop it in an ambitious and sustainable manner over the coming years to support our ever greater ambitions. Another transformation since that time has been in our global presence. We are Ireland's global university. We are the largest primarily English-speaking university in the EU and by some margin Ireland's most successful university in Horizon Europe funding. We value our European identity and many of our community have led in Europe. We have close and enduring ties with our nearest neighbours in the UK, as well as with countries further afield and with major global organisations. We have a genuine facility for meaningful global partnerships that get things done. These are extraordinary assets for us and will continue to be so over the coming years. And of course, the greatest asset of all is our university community, and you've seen that here today. In every part of this organization, you will find people fizzing with ideas. We have a shared commitment to scholarship, to service, to academic freedom, to values that must endure at this time of fracturing societies in many parts of the world. Across our community of engaged alumni, you find an enduring bond and very meaningful support for our university that gladdens my heart in every place where I encounter it. And I greatly look forward to supporting our alumni community throughout my time as president. And if you ask those who work here or who interact with us in any way what makes our environment so special, they will say that it is the students. To be part of the journey of our students as they explore the world and their place within it is the most enormous privilege. Our students will always be at the heart of our university as we map out how a distinctive and ambitious UCD education can make a lasting positive difference to their lives. It is almost 20 years since we transformed our education offerings through the introduction of Horizons. Let's think about what comes next. Our university community is reflected in another important element of this event that you, those of you who are here with us in O'Reilly Hall may have noticed in the conservatory. This is the work produced in the Belonging Project, led by Dr. Emma Farrell of UCD School of Education, in which past and present students and staff of UCD submitted short written pieces and how they found their place of belonging within our university community. From these submissions, unique art pieces were created by students from the National College of Art and Design. And you can see the pieces side by side in the exhibition outside. This theme of belonging and community is one that I will keep at the front of my mind throughout my presidency. As Marie noted earlier, I was funded by a fellowship from Intel during my latter years in Berkeley. And after returning to Ireland to take up a lectureship in UCD, I attended the opening of the company's Fab 10 in Leakslip, that iconic moment in the development of the Irish technology sector and indeed our economic transformation. In a few days time, I will be in Leakslip again for the opening of Fab 34. The story of Intel in Ireland has been a significant part of the story of Ireland over my professional lifetime, and it's one of many examples. Both stories have been fueled by talented people with advanced skills, delivering with ambition in a global marketplace. Where does the Irish story go from here? This is not obvious at this time of disruption. The playbook will not be the same as it was previously, but some elements will be the same. Crucially, we will continue to rely for our success on talent and on the vital portion of that talent developed in higher education. How could it be otherwise, given who we are and the resources at our disposal? We need more than ever the advanced skill sets and global mindsets the critical thinking and awkward questioning fostered by a strong 
and confident higher education system. In the energy sector and sustainability more broadly, in agri-food, digital technologies, manufacturing, advanced therapeutics, in cultural and creative industries, in critical infrastructures, in healthcare, in social policy and more, there are big changes underway. There are problems to be solved and there are opportunities to be seized. In Ireland and in every major economy, there is a never-ending need for these talented people with advanced skills who will deliver in a globalised world and who will constructively shape their societies. And where do countries, where does Ireland find these talented people with their advanced skills and thereby secure competitive advantage? They find them from higher education institutions. In all of the sectors that I listed off just there, we in UCD have very exciting initiatives underway and growing that are delivering exciting and important ideas and innovations and great, great people. We have all of the attributes and advantages, apart from one, that we need to really drive the next phase of success for Ireland and to be among the universities making most difference to the world with all of the reputation, influence, network and success that comes with that. It would be misleading though not to discuss the missing one today. The student to faculty ratio in UCD when I was a student in the 1980s, that time of economic deprivation for this country, was around 13 to 1. Now, in a vastly wealthier Ireland, it is over 20 to 1. Much, much worse than I enjoyed in my student days. In the OECD Education at a Glance document just published, Ireland is second from the bottom for student faculty ratio in tertiary education. It is over a decade since the running of a cycle of the National Programme for Research in Third Level Institutions, so vital to bringing our research infrastructure up to the level needed for serious delivery. As a country whose main natural resource is talent and whose success has, developed, has depended so fundamentally on the talent developed in higher education institutions, how can we justify this? Do we really think that with all the changes and competitive forces headed our way, we should be constraining our ability to reflect these with agility and ambition within Irish higher education? We are doing the very, very best we can in an underfunded system. And we in UCD are delivering extraordinary things, often with financial support from our committed community of donors, which we appreciate so greatly. But we could do so much more if the funding gap, even to the international average, though of course we like to portray ourselves as well above average among knowledge economies, were closed. This gap is the single biggest threat to our university's ability to deliver on our, on our ambitions over the coming years. The government, drawing on the very beneficial impact of the Department of Further and Higher Education Research, Innovation and Science, has assessed the funding gap at 307 million euro per annum and stated their commitment to closing this over successive budgets. There is a 1.5 billion euro surplus in the National Training Fund. The underfunding of higher education, acknowledged time and time again in international benchmarking, will without question limit what this country can achieve for itself and how we can contribute to addressing global challenges. The National Training Fund can be important and is indeed an obvious element of the solution if the will is there. I hope the will is there. I have seen how this university transformed lives, transforms lives it transformed mine. I have seen how UCD and the UCD community, more I would argue than any other institution, enabled the transformation of this country. I have seen how through our global presence and partnerships, the world is seeing how we in UCD make a difference and wants to get to know us better. I am very ambitious 
and very optimistic about how, with the wind in our sails, we will continue to do extraordinary things. We will shortly begin the development of our next university strategy with the input of all sections of the UCD community. Our university mottos are ad astra, to the stars, just like AirSat, signifying ambition and excellence, and Coram Fainia, the spirit of equality and inclusion that has been a real focus for us. These mottos will continue to guide us as we embark on our next steps. I believe to my core in the value and in the values of higher education. It is an enormous honour to serve as president of this great university and I very much look forward to working with all of you and to showing together how UCD really makes a difference to the world through these extraordinary times. Gurumila Mahogiv Galer. Thank you. Thank you sincerely, President Professor Orla Feely, for that wonderful speech, for that emphasis on creativity and problem solving in Ireland's story and in UCD's story. It was inspiring to hear of your journey as a young engineering student here in UCD to UCD Berkeley to complete your PhD and then your journey back to Ireland to contribute to the transformation that was taking place in the country at the time. I think your deep connection to the university is very clear and as are your, your truly high ambitions for where you want UCD to be in your time as president. And I'm sure that I speak for everybody here and those of us joining online to say that we're with you, to support you in building that UCD and all in the hope that UCD can and does make real positive change in Ireland and the world with those goals. So thank you sincerely for that. Please join me to thank sincerely again Profe uh, President Professor Orla Feely and Chair of the Governing Authority, Marie O'Connor. Now, to maybe give you time to contemplate over all we have to think about now after that lovely speech from Professor Orla Feely, and to also enjoy more of the culture and talent that we have here in our wonderful university, I'm delighted to introduce our final perform performance. Donal Lunny is an Irish folk musician and producer, and he's also a musician in residence with UCD Creative Futures Academy. And he's going to be joined on stage by Dr. Peter Moran of the UCD School of Music and UCD science student Connor McGowna, UCD biomedical student Louise Costello, and UCD maths graduate Dermot Edmondson. Peter is going to introduce each of the pieces they will play, so please join me in welcoming them to the stage. Good evening, everybody. Um, we're very glad to be here, and thank you, uh, Professor Feely, for the invitation. Um, and uh, I must say, it's been such an honor to have this great legend as our artist in residence over this last uh, year and, and a bit now. Um, and thanks to the Creative Futures Academy for, for making all this possible. It's, it's been a a great honor and just such a huge value to the students to soak up all that depth of experience and knowledge as well. Um, the module that Donald works on with us here in the Creative Futures Academy in the School of Music, it's called Traditional Music Practices. So it kind of looks at the tradition from a few different perspectives. The first couple of tunes we're gonna play for you are Garrett Barry's Jig and the Humors of Bally Lachlan. And we got into the tracing the history of these tunes last year 
uh, one student wrote a, a fascinating short essay tracing the original uh, artist behind these songs, Garrett Barry, behind the first tune, who was a, a piper from the mid 1800s, and how his influence um, came down through uh, the family of Willie Clancy and into modern day pipers, including Lima Flynn, who uh, is a, a long time collaborator of, uh, she was a long time collaborator of Donald's. Um, so there's a great bit of history, and, and part of the, the challenge then is of taking tunes from the piping tradition and interpreting them for string instruments and, and modern instruments. So we get to unpack all of that in the classroom, and uh, this is our interpretation of those two tunes, Garrett Barry's and the Humans of Ballylachlan. Thank you. Now, so um, 
Another aspect of this tradition, of course, is that it's a living, breathing tradition. You know, Professor Feely mentioned about uh, the talent here on campus and the, the fizzing with ideas. Um, so an important part of what we're doing in the School of Music, especially with uh, such a great guest artist, is to create new music, uh, which is a fascinating process when you're working within such an ancient, ancient tradition, to be new and traditional at the same time. And Donal has been great in working with the students and meeting with them to help them develop their own ideas. Um, so this next piece is actually an original composition by one of our own students. Uh, so this is Connor McGowan's jig. Conor McGowan, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Just to say it's a great pleasure to be here, an honor to play for you. Delighted. <laughs> <laughs> Going to finish up with a few more tunes. Uh, great. So we'll, um, we'll finish with uh, two slip jigs. Uh, again, this is something we explored in class and created new arrangements and harmonies. Uh, so this is our arrangement now of the Dusty Miller and Top It Off. Thanks again for having us. Have a good evening.
Don't alarm me, ladies and gentlemen. What, what a pleasure to listen to that. I'm too old to know if there's still weekly music sessions happening in the student bar. Uh, we did have them back in my day, but uh, it's fabulous to see that the tradition is so alive and well here on campus. Thank you again to Peter and to all the students, and I'll mention my name now in a second. Um, but that brings us to uh, the close of our presidential inaugural address and the, our event today to celebrate the community here in UCD. I'd like to again thank all of our speakers, Israel Olatunde, Kerry Roan, Stefan O'Brien, Chair of the Governing Authority, Marie O'Connor. I'd also like to thank our UCD Quartet, who performed earlier, our UCD Choral Scholars, Associate Professor Des Early, our Artist-in-Residence that we just heard, Donal Lunny, Dr. Peter Moran, Connor McGowna, that was a lovely, lovely tune. Connor, thank you very much. Louise Costello and Dermot Edmondson. And of course, Michael for signing throughout as well. Thank you very, very much, Michael. Finally, I'd like to thank President Professor Orla Feely and wish her all of the very best for her tenure as President of UCD. Gnaire and Tolat, Felicia and Obergler. And as I said, we're all with you and behind you with your vision for UCD. I'd like to invite you all now to refreshments in the conservatory. And I look forward to a new chapter in the story of our wonderful university. Gramagiv Glair, Augustan Panavasanidman.